Hello, Michael. Hello. Let's do a sound check. A mic check. Uh, I apologize. How's that sound? Brother, listen, I'm usually the one that's having problems up here, so don't worry. <laughs> I, I must have got... I'm sorry about that. That uh, Oh, it's all good. Went, meeting went too long there, and I, I raced back home here. Brother, I'm... Uh, Thanks I'm, for being patient. I am flexible. We still got 45 minutes, so let's roll with it. You want to open uh, us in perfect. Perfect. I Take do. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you for waiting for me. I appreciate that. Uh, Father God, I apologize for being late to my uh, Mega Man broadcast. I hope you forgive me. I pray you'll bless me tonight. And I want to share some important things with uh, Shannon's listeners. You know, I've been on uh, Omega Man for so long now. I consider his listeners my friends, too. So I trust you're going to help them and bless them and in the name of Jesus, amen. I say amen to that, folks. Welcome. We've got Michael W. Smith in the house from Hardcore Christianity. <laughs> Welcome, my friend. Take it away. The mic is yours. No, oh, thank you. Um, as I uh, mentioned uh, several times over the years, um, I used to be a, a secular counselor for uh, 25 years before I went into the ministry. And uh, <clears throat> I went from secular counseling to... Um, Christian counseling in 2005, and that's what I've been doing ever since, which included uh, inner healing and deliverance. And uh, when I was a secular counselor, I frequently ran into people like this. If you look at James chapter 1, and when I was a secular counselor, uh, not one of them ever got healed. I never cured a single one of them with the conventional psychiatry or psychology. In James uh, chapter 1, uh, the Bible says, this in verse 8, uh, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And I didn't realize years ago that... Um, before God revealed to me how, how uh, all this psychiatry and psychology stuff worked and how off I was, I didn't really have an f- understanding of psychology at all. I had man-made training in that field and uh, did very well in it, but I didn't understand how, it, how psychology really works until the Holy Ghost showed me what was going on. He's the, to say the least, he's the master psychiatrist uh, above anybody. That's a understatement for sure. This Greek word for double-minded there is the Greek word dipsychus. A dipsychus is uh, defined as a person that has two souls. And uh, it's mentioned two times in the Bible, both in James. And later on it's mentioned in chapter 4. And James is the only apostle that mentions this word, dipsychus. I found that fascinating. If you go to James chapter 4, verse 8, it says, Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. This is King James Version. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Dipsychus, a person with two souls. And... That verse confused me for years because it says, cleanse your hands, sinners. And I realized that in the Greek text, harmartalus means uh, someone who is living a life, life that's practicing sinning. And God showed me that there were two types of people who were harmartalus. Uh, one is a sinner who's unsaved who sins by nature and practices sin as a normal course of their lifestyle. I used to be that way before I turned my life over to the Lord. And my youngest daughter led me to the Lord back in the mid-90s. And uh, I used to sin because I was a sinner. And that's all I knew, and that's what I did by nature. But then God showed me that Many Christians are also 
living in sin. They have all kinds of sins, trespasses. They're infected with demons. They have chronic negative thoughts. They have demonic emotions like sadness, depression, bitterness, anger, rage, and so on. And God showed me that this verse is talking about people who have come to the Lord and got saved, but they are still a dipsicus, somebody who has two souls. And what happens is every human being uh, is born with a soul, and your soul is the seat of your emotions. Your spirit man is the seat of your spirituality. Your mind is the centerpiece of your free will and your IQ, your intelligence. And your conscience is the focal point of your morality. And those four things, spirit, soul, mind, and conscience, they make up your inner man. Paul called it your inner man. And uh, obviously at death, those four things leave your body and they go to either, either heaven or hell. Your inner man leaves your body. Your body obviously stays here. But in this verse, it's talking about Christians living in sin who are double-minded, a dipsicus. And what happened was God showed me that the demons inside the person's brain try to build a, a, a second soul, a fake soul. And then I remember years ago as a secular counselor, I had many clients that seemed to have altered states or other personalities. And I remember some of the clients that had dissociative identity, identity disorder, DID, they used to call it MPD back in the day, multiple personality disorder. I remembered that these people were, were dipsicus. They, they had a fake soul and they had a real soul because sometimes I would be counseling the person's real soul, the real person, so to speak. And the other times there seemed to be another person in there, a different person. Uh, sometimes they would have different vocabulary, sometimes different accents, sometimes different voices. It's very strange. And I realized that what had happened was almost 100% of these cases were patients who had pre-existing child abuse or severe emotional trauma, accidents, beatings, rapes, things like that. They had been severely traumatized. And I saw that the spirits in the person's brain developed this fake soul inside the person's subconscious so that sometimes you're not sure which person you're talking to. Sometimes you're not sure which person you're talking to. And sometimes it sounds like a different person. If you go to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 10, it seems to make more sense here. Everybody has this verse memorized. If you go to verse 4, Paul said, uh, Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty to God to the pulling down of strongholds. And this Greek word for strongholds there was akuruma, and it means a fortress, a military fortress. And uh, if you saw that movie Braveheart, you saw these fortresses made out of lumber, and he was going around burning them all down. What God showed me was that these demons, through trauma, get into people's brains, and they build up these strongholds in their mind and in their subconscious. And they're like fortresses, and the fortresses are filled with unbelief, doubt, chronic negative thoughts, fear thoughts, anger thoughts, all these things live in that fortress, and the fortress lives in your mind. 
And then verse 5 in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 clarifies it even more. Paul said, we are casting down imaginations. Those, those are things that are in your mind. Yes, it's not your imagination like you're trying to come up with uh, you know, how, to, how to make a car fly. You're imagining different things like mechanical comprehension. This Greek word logismus is where we get our English word logic. And it means logical. Casting down logistics and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. This is all occurring in the person's mind. And then it says we are to bring into captivity every thought, every thought to the obedience of Christ. And so God showed me that uh, Christians who are failures and have been severely abused before they became Christians are infected with these spirits that build these strongholds in their mind. And they have two souls in there, almost like they have two different personalities. And sometimes you're talking to this person and something triggers the other person, so to speak, to come up. I don't know if you remember the movie Psycho. It came out in the 50s, an Alfred Hitchcock movie. Uh, but anyway, this uh, this guy ran a hotel for his family. And uh, when he was young, he came home and his mother was in having an affair and he caught him in bed. And uh, the kid went crazy and killed both of them. Well, he buried the guy out in the out in the lagoon, but his mother, he couldn't bear to get to leave her or let her go, so he put her down in the fruit cellar in the basement. Do you remember that movie? Sure. Psycho. I, Psycho. I, yes, sure. Everybody the, uh, had probably has seen it. It's a very famous movie. But anyway, the guy, the guy uh, keeps managing the hotel, and he, uh, through the trauma of murdering his own mother, he develops a dipsicus. He becomes a dipsicus. He has a person with two souls. And he would he has kind of assumed the the soul of his mother after he murdered her. And I, I, you remember at the end of the mil- movie, um, some people may not know what I'm talking about, but at the end of this movie, uh, a psychiatrist interviews Anthony Perkins, the actor who played uh, the mentally ill guy. And the psychiatrist comes out and he's talking to the family. And he's, he's asked, they're asking him, uh, hey, you know, where, where's my sister? What happened? He said, well, she's in the, she's in the bottom of the lagoon. So, are, so is her car and everything. And the other guy goes, well, where's all the money at she took? And he said, he said probably in the lagoon. This wasn't a crime of passion. I found out what happened. And he said, did, did she? Did he tell you? He said, no, I got it from the mother. And then at the end of the movie, if you remember, she's sitting there on a, on a bench, and she's, she's, she's thinking the mother has now taken over the other personality. The, the, the kid is gone now. And she says, I, I won't even swat that fly, you know. Um, I apologize for using that as an example. People probably never saw that movie. But anyways, it was a famous movie back in back in the 60s. It was huge. I mean, really big. Like a blockbuster, we call them. Anyway, the point of the illustration is, this is how many born-again Christians are. I know that sounds crazy, but I do a lot of marriage counseling. I do, I do a lot of individual counseling. And you'd be quite surprised how many Christians have, as James said, a a dipsicus, a double-minded man, is unstable in all his ways. And the reason for that is these spirits, through, through, through severe trauma, 
have built kind of a fortress in the person's mind, as Paul called it. Uh, Okuruma is a Greek word, a stronghold. It's, it's a military fortress. He's using military terms here to illustrate what he's, spiritual things he's talking about. Brilliant. And then he goes on to focus on your mind and what's in this fortress that you're supposed to be doing with the real soul. The real soul, the real person is supposed to be casting down these imaginations and all these high things that exalt ex- themselves against the knowledge of God and bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And the Dipsicus illness is a a prime example of why there's so many dysfunctional Christians around there in the churches and so many, why so many Christians can't, cannot find their destiny because these spirits have built this fake soul in their sub, subconscious portion of their mind and that soul manifests when it's triggered through uh, if, it, if the person is attacked, through anger through frustration, something physical abuse major disappointment heartache, major heartache abandonment all these different things happen to the Christian and you can be standing there talking to them and you'd be shocked the, the, their eyes kind of change and it's almost like somebody else is talking to you now it's a, a very odd experience but believe it or not a lot of people have had that and have noticed that in other Christians and that's why James said that these people are, are very unstable in all their ways they're vacillators they're up, they're down, they're in, they're out Today they're serving God, hallelujah. Tomorrow they're in major depression with unbelief and doubt everywhere and they need somebody to come pray for them or heal them or or they've been reinfected with demons. They went through deliverance and they felt fine. Now they've been reinfected. And the reason for that is, 2 Corinthians 10, they didn't bring these thoughts into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So the demons put a thought in their head. A negative thought, you know, you're fat, you're stupid, you're ugly, you're broke, uh, you're going to lose the house, you're going to lose your job, something like that. Some form of negative dread pops into the Christian's mind. They don't like me, they don't want to be my friend, they don't want to use me, this church doesn't like me. It could be anything. There's like a million thoughts these demons use. I could never even scratch the surface of their weaponry. But they put this negative thought in the Christian's mind. And the, pers- the Christian doesn't take the thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. They don't kill the thought. They don't take it captive and they don't execute it. And verse 6 in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 illustrates why there's so many dysfunctional ministers around now. You have so many ministers who don't live holy lives they, they they do bizarre things. They get involved with weird sins. They backslide. Verse 6 explains it. Paul said, you must have, a, have in readiness to avenge. It says revenge in the King James Bible, but ektikeo in Greek actually means to avenge or to vindicate all disobedience after as soon as, the Greek word hatan, as soon as your obedience is fulfilled. And so you see all these people going into the ministry, all these people preaching and teaching the gospel who have jacked up Christian lives. They've got all kind of symptomatology that you can't even believe. They can't control their emotions. They can't control the negative thoughts running through their mind. They're argumentative. And Paul outlined to Timothy Uh, And in Colossians, the requirements for a bishop or an episcopus, that means a church leader, a person who's a leader in the church, an episcopus. He called it, it was translated as a bishop. And Paul warned, this is what a bishop has to be. Look at all these things that that are required of a man of God or a woman of God to be a leader in a church. 
And that's why you see it not happening. They get into the ministry before they have, A, gone through deliverance, and B, recognized that they are a double-minded person or someone who has two souls, a dipsicus. Hey, this is a great teaching, Michael. If you're just joining us, we're live with Michael W. Smith. He's talking about Dipsicus, the man with two souls. Jacked up Christian lives and negative dread. Keep going, my brother. This is good. Well, if you're in the ministry, uh, anybody who's in the ministry, um, or if you're like me, if you're in the, in the counseling and deliverance end of the ministry, a Dipsicus is, is obvious. We see them all the time. That fortress in their mind that Paul mentions in Second Corinthians 10, that's real. That's reality. And Paul is saying, listen, you've got to clear that fortress out of all of doubt, unbelief, negative thoughts, dread thoughts, fear thoughts. All these thoughts roaming around your head that these spirits have put in there and they built up this fortress so that the person uh, is chronically being affected by them. Have you ever met somebody where, who's a born-again, spirit-filled Christian who is so negative? Hey, let's go down here. We'll do this and that. No, I don't know about that. No, it's like Every time you come up with a suggestion to serve God or do something positive, they seem to come up with a downer, so to speak. And that's coming out of that fortress that Paul's talking about in this fake soul in there. And nine times out of ten, if you go back in their lives, and which I do on every session, you'll find that that person was emotionally traumatized somehow, some way, they're obviously different ways. But something has to strike the person that's, that's traumatic for this uh, second soul to start to manifest. The demons build it inside the person's subconscious. And it's real. And sometimes, have you ever been talking to somebody and just for no reason, just just like somebody flipped a switch, click, they're mad. All of a sudden, click, they're lusting after someone. And just, just a few seconds ago, maybe a minute, they seem to be a completely different person. And if you've ever married somebody who's a dipsicus, most of those marriages end up in divorce. They're very difficult people to live with because they're unstable in all their ways. So Monday, they seem fine. Tuesday, uh, it's trauma time, collapsing, falling apart. You know, Sunday, they're, on, they're praising God and they believe and everything is going good. Tuesday, boom, they don't have any faith anymore. They're crying out for help. They want somebody to pray for them. They're picking up demons again. I call them recyclers. They come in, they get rack of demons out, and then two days later, they let them all back in. And it's the second soul that's killing them. And it causes all the instability in their life, if that makes any sense. That's what James was trying to tell us. This is a severe demonic psychiatric condition it's not something where somebody has a bad attitude that's 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 light duty this is something that's psychiatrically serious with the christian and it's usually nine times out of ten if you go back in their lives you'll see there was some kind of trauma there you know child abuse sexual abuse beatings abandonment parental divorce something hit them hard and the demons started like building this fortress, like Paul said. They had a fortress in their minds. It's really, uh, in some cases, scary because these people are unstable. Well, they're 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 unpredictable emotionally. If you've ever met anybody like this, you can't trust them emotionally. They're they're tough to work with. And if you can't get them to see it, 
if they're if they're they don't have a broken heart, if they don't have any godly sorrow that Paul mentioned to the Corinthians, they're darn near impossible to get healed. I mean, you're just five years later they're still in church screwing up. And people notice it. You know, it's not this isn't something that's hidden. You can tell when somebody kind of has an alternate personality that manifests under different um, exposure to stress, if I'm making any sense. Making a lot of it's sense, spi- Michael. It's spiritual. It's spiritual. So somebody somebody who has a consistent chronic pattern like this, uh, pastors and associate pastors and you know church counselors they'll tell they'll try to get them to renew their mind. So they try to pump Bible verses into their head. Uh, they do a little role playing with them. Uh, they try and get them to recite scriptures and memorize them. My God shall supply all your needs according to His riches, and they go through this whole biblical uh, process. That doesn't work. It doesn't work. Because the spirits that built this fake soul in their brain and in their subconscious, they're still in there. Those spirits have to come out. And that's why deliverance with these type of of people are so important. Because if you don't get these spirits out, they never recover. You can, you can preach to them till the cows come home and give them Bible studies till the end of time. They never get healed. Because this fake soul in there that started being constructed, usually in childhood, through trauma, this thing seems to be a natural part of the person because they've had it so long. And that's why James said, listen, you can't go into the ministry and avenge Satan's destruction of others until your repentance is complete. You have to finish first. James chapter 4. And you see all these dysfunctional pastors and ministers on TV and so on. That, that's the problem. They never went through deliverance first. They never got healed from their childhood trauma. Their spirit man did. The Holy Spirit moved in and they feel great and they have anointings and giftings. That part's okay. It's the soul part. A dipsicus is a person with two souls. You know, not two minds, not two spirits, not two, the soul. And that's where the emotions come out. That's why they're so emotionally hurt and emotionally volatile. Because when you're talking to these people, they seem to get emotionally upset over stuff. You're going, well, that doesn't, that's not a big deal. Well, why, why does that bother them? Or you say something and you think it's an innocuous statement. And they, you know, they go off. They, they start feeling uncomfortable. They get upset. And you're sitting there going, wait a minute, what what I say? What I do? I mean I I didn't mean that. I didn't do that. You know, they're very uncomfortable people to be around. Because this other soul, it's almost like a fake personality. It's almost like you're talking to a different person. A lot of times if the condition is severe, you'll actually see their face change and their their eye the tint of their eyes and their iris changes. I've seen that in deliverance many times before. So some, some of the people I've seen actually have the iris go almost near black. And their whole face changes. They have a total contour to their face that's different than the one I was talking to for an hour and a half. I, ho- I hope I'm not offending anybody by sounding like I'm uh, getting too, psych- too psychiatric on everybody. I'm actually not. I'm trying to show through the word of God, that psychology is a valuable uh, science 
if the Holy Ghost is in charge of it. If, like I used to be involved in it, where I was trained at the university level, I got my degrees and that kind of thing, that is not reliable, and, and, and that will not cure someone. And I, I know because for 25 years, I never cured anybody. I never saw anybody actually cured until I saw the Holy Spirit do it. So he's the counselor, the comforter, the, the paracletus. That's who he is. He's the great one. But what I try to do to the people is to do what I'm doing right now with you. I'm trying to talk to some of your listeners and kind of try and explain to them, look, that person that you're dealing with or, the, or you yourself you have emotions you can't control. You seem like you're a different person at times. You know, sometimes people just say something that means nothing and you get triggered and you start, you know, almost like manifesting. You get emotionally hurt real easy. You're overly sensitive to your environment. You sense people are looking at you negatively when they're not. You feel people criticizing you when they're not. This could be related to severe trauma in your past and this horrible dipsicus, the second soul the demons cooked up that you're struggling with. It's in James 1.8. Uh, a dipsicus, a double-minded man or woman, is unstable. In all their ways, because you cannot, born again Christians cannot live out of their soul. Your soul is your enemy. Your emotions are your enemy. You have to learn to control your emotions. And that's one of the gifts of the spirit, obviously temperance. If you can't control your emotions, your, your ministry is going to absolutely be destroyed. It's going to be horrible. Have I confused you? Uh, I'm not trying to. Um, have you met anybody like this? Uh, most people have, particularly if you're in the ministry. You work with people like over and over and again, and they don't change. Absolutely. And, and you're just going, my gosh, I've poured my guts into this person. And they're not changing. What is going on here? Why aren't they doing it? Well, the, they could be a dipsicus. You may be dealing with this person's fake soul. They may have two souls. One's the original one they were born with, given, given by God. Everybody has a soul. But not everybody has two souls. And so James goes through the process of of what he kind of gives an overview of how to fix a dipsicus. Verse 7, uh, James 4, submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. Draw near to God. He will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. The second soul inside the person is the fortress Paul was talking about in 2 Corinthians 10. It carries around it's got it all stored in there. The fortress is like a giant U-Haul storage facility. And it's got all kinds of crap in there. Negative thoughts, unbelief, lies, false beliefs, fake religion, crazy religious beliefs, misinterpretation. It just loads it up from one thing after the other. And I've noticed that the ones that have been healed of this condition in my ministry, followed verse 9. James said, Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. And if I can't get somebody to reach this point of conviction and repentance where they will Look at the 
look at their lives and realize, hey, I've been living out of this fake soul, and that caused me to sin, to get angry, to lose control of my emotions, to rebel, to fight, to criticize others. If you, if, if I can't get the person to see that, and they're not sorry about it, and they just laugh it off, and oh well, you know, this it isn't this bad, it isn't that bad. No, James said, let your laughter be turned to mourning. Let your joy be turned to heaviness. And humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. He will lift you up. And the ones that have been healed of this condition that I've worked with, some of them I haven't. I failed. They haven't gotten healed. These are the ones who who were humble and were broken, and God lifted them up. And all the demons that built this fake soul in their subconscious, boom, we got them out. They'll come out if the person will humble themselves in the sight of the Lord. And it's hard to do when you've got a second soul in there who wants to rebel and wants to control everything and who resents others and criticizes others and gives a, gives a poor person all these negative emotions, fear, abandonment, loneliness, all these things come out of there, this fake soul. If you're married to somebody like this, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Who's ever listening to me on your show tonight, they're going, oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that was my ex-wife. That was my ex-husband. Oh, now I get it now. Yeah, this makes sense. Yeah, he, they did kind of turn into a different person when they, when they got triggered. It did seem like I was talking to somebody else. And I'm not saying that they're sick as... Anthony Perkins was in that movie Psycho. I was just using that as an illustration. But it's a similar setup where you have this altered state, so to speak. And the person is functioning. You know, they may be functioning as a fam- family, as a mother or father or an employee or something like that somewhere. They're functioning. But spiritually and emotionally, They're double-minded and unstable in all their ways, spiritual ways. They're double-minded soul. Michael, here's the million-dollar question. What is the cure for the dipsicus? Well, it's right in verse 9. I explain the condition to the person, and I illustrate for them what they've been doing out of this fake soul and for how long they've been doing it. And then we tie it back to what caused it, which is usually some kind of trauma, usually. And then I explain to him, look, you got to follow this step-by-step guide from the Holy Ghost. Here's what he said, verse 9, you must be afflicted and mourn, and you must weep and let your laughter be turned to mourning. Mourning. Penthos is the Greek word for mourning there. It means it means godly grief. Godly grief. It comes out of your soul, your real soul, not the fake one. The fake one won't do it. And then it says, humble yourselves. The person has to understand that if they're not broken and they won't humble themselves, this, this double-mindedness thing will never go away. They're, they're stuck with it. It's horrible. And Wow, you uh, so frustrating working with these poor people because you can see the bondage they're in. It's very painful to watch. It's not a matter of saying, oh, did you get abused as a kid? Yes, I did. Okay, well, let's, who did it? Oh, my dad. My dad, what's his name? Bob. Okay, well, let's pray for Bob right now. Let's forgive him. And let's release some of Bob's demons out of you. Okay, for a, for a regular Christian, that works. That little uh, thing I went through right there. In fact, I did it Friday night at the uh, at the uh, healing service. It's on my YouTube channel. You can listen to it if you want to. We had uh, four people got healed Friday night, and uh, this condition, a dipsicus, though this is more serious. This isn't somebody who has, you know, oh, you got a bad attitude. You need to change your attitude. 
you know what? You speak before you think. Oh, okay. No, this is something more serious. A dipsicus is somebody that has a fake soul. And it requires uh, the person to be very broken in order to tear this thing down, like Paul said in 2 Corinthians 10. We demolish strongholds, is what he said. Powerful. This is a powerful teaching tonight. Uh, on Dipsicus, the man with two souls. Yes. Listen, you did a fantastic job, Michael. Uh, well, I hope I didn't confuse anybody. No, sir. This I apologize a- if I did, but I wasn't trying to teach psychology. I was just trying to not at all illustrate that some of the people that you've been working with, maybe in your ministries. Yes, sir. Uh, you've seen this. You've been around for years. You've seen all of this. Some of these people, you're going, my God, we've gone over this 50 times with them. They've, they've, have a tr- they've had truckloads of support, and they're still doing the same doggone thing. You know, and everybody is- that's working with them is frustrated, and they're tired of them, and they want to, uh, technically we call it spiritual abandonment. They want to get away from them. See, they, they've had enough of it. Well, I was trying to explain, I, I hope I did, that the, the, that could be a dipsicus. That person, you could have been dealing with the fake soul on numerous occasions, and the fake soul will not listen to you. They will not obey the Word of God. They will not listen, and they will not change. This is one of the most articulate explanations of what is actually going on here. Fantastic illustrations so. tonight. And there's more oh, where this you. teaching comes from. Michael, thank you. I want you to uh, tell people about the ministry of hardcore Christianity. Uh, because you deal with hardcore cases. In fact, I got a call yeah, the, the, the about mentally Ill. two weeks ago from my mother who told me about a couple individuals that we have in common that we know that are hardcore cases. Uh, we're talking about people that are on psychotropic drugs, uh, right. people that are probably at the edge of suicide. And all the counsel in the world is not going to help them. They need hardcore deliverance. Correct. Correct. And I said, uh, I know a guy, and I know a place that they can go and they can get some help. I want you to tell them about that place in your ministry because you are seeing results over there. Over to you, my friend. Well, well, thank you. Uh, Hardcore Christianity, uh, we run the Arizona Deliverance Center. It's in in downtown Phoenix. It's on 15th Avenue, just south of Osborne Road. It's a red brick building there. And we provide uh, free counseling services to born-again Christians because uh, many of them, they don't have any money and they don't have any insurance. So we have donors that uh, send us money and we pay the bills and everything. So we can provide these services at no charge if you're a born-again Christian. We don't do secular work there. If a person comes to the deliverance center, they have to be ready to turn their lives over to the Lord. You know, this is a Christian ministry, not a secular one. So uh, if they're a born-again Christian, there's no charge for the services. If you happen to live from out of state, we do have a residential facility that's next door, and we have people come fly in uh, to the to Phoenix, uh, and they stay there for two or three days and get counseling and deliverance and ministry. And um, if the person happens to be a, an addict and we run into a truckload of those, in fact, I'm one of the instructors at the Dream Center in Phoenix. That's a huge rehabilitation facility, Christian rehabilitation facility. Uh, a lot of them will have to send a detox first. Okay, if they're heavily addicted to drugs or alcohol they would have to go to detox first and then we bring them over and work with them and then uh, the issue involves in, uh, healing their soul wounds and casting out the spirits and dismantling this the second soul it has to be dismantled as Paul said demolished as well was his term casting down imaginations uh, the Greek word is kathiro 
and it means to demolish something. Like you would take a wrecking ball to a building, casting down, demolish that second soul. Because that's what causes the person to be a double-minded Christian. And uh, in addition, you can contact me, send me an email at mike at hardcorechristianity.com. You can call me at 602-636-5800, and uh, we'll be happy to get you on the uh, counseling session. We do have a YouTube teaching channel. We have two live services every week, Thursday and Friday at 7 o'clock Mountain Time. We also have two Zoom deliverance and healing services, and the Zoom services are just absolutely booming. They're free, obviously. Send me an email, mike at hardcorechristianity.com. We have a ladies' Zoom service, and we have a Zoom service for men and women on Wednesday nights. The uh, Monday night Zoom service for the ladies is at 6.30 p.m. Mountain Time, and the men and women Wednesday night is 6 o'clock Mountain Time. Okay, And if you happen to live in the North Carolina area, I'll be there in April. Uh, uh, with a uh, large, uh, they're having a large deliverance conference there, and I'm one of the speakers. So if you happen to live in the North Carolina area, I'll be able to see you in April. This is fantastic. Now, you have PayPal available for people to support your ministry or cash up? Yes, it's on the website, hardcorechristianity.com. Uh, the address is there. If you want to mail us a check, that would be great. We don't charge anything for any of our services, so we don't have bills we send out. But um, you know, kind people uh, send us donations, and we use that to pay the bills. Now, Michael, also, do you have any teaching materials available? Um, you had mentioned in the past you had a uh, a whole course, even on USB or Kindle digital downloads. What do you got available? Yeah, on a, on a USB stick, I have a. I taught eighteen classes on healing and deliverance. And if you happen to be someone who'd be interested in getting into the healing or deliverance field, I'd recommend that you uh, get this uh, USB drive and go through these eighteen classes because it will save you a lot of uh, startup mistakes and errors that I made when I got into the field. I didn't have anybody to help me. So I made all kinds of errors. So I had to learn the hard way. So this teaching would be uh, very, very helpful for you. I also wrote a book called The Root Cause of Mental Illnesses in Christians. It's called Planus Spirits. Those are the demons that get into your brain and cause uh, mental illnesses. And uh, I wrote a book on the root cause and cure of mental illness in Christians. That would be something I'd recommend you get if you happen to have a family member or loved one who is born-again Christian who is mentally ill. You know, like bipolar, clinically depressed, anxiety disorder, and so on. You know, uh, I think you should consider also putting together a uh, a book on Dipsychus, The Man with Two Souls. Man, talk about a top seller. That would, would be. Oh, my goodness. Interesting. Because, you know, there hasn't been any real work done on it since uh, Frank Hammond and the Fragmented Soul in the 70s. And at least that I'm aware of. Um, And the description you gave tonight is one of the most articulate presentations on this. And uh, just something to think about. Uh, Thank you. Because I'll be ordering a copy when you do. We love and appreciate you, Michael. Get me a date for February. Looking forward to seeing you back on soon. I will. God bless you, brother. Appreciate you, Shannon. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate you, my friend. Yes, indeed.